MZ TV. Martin Sander here. 5.45 a.m. Tuesday morning. Got a full moon out here today. Don't know if you can see it up there. You know, our Lord was called the Lamb of God. Why was he called the Lamb of God? Because he was the fulfillment of the type. The type. What was the type? The lamb that was slain for the sins of Israel. He became the ultimate lamb. The last lamb, if you will. And that he was also slain for the sins of Israel. But of course, he's better than the type. The lamb is not fully conscious of what it's doing. The lamb is just thrown on the altar has no idea what's happening no awareness that it's being offered for sin that it's being appointed by God as a representative if you will as a precursor of Christ Christ is greater in that he voluntarily goes to the cross he knows what he's doing. He knows he's taking on the sins of Israel. And in this, he's much greater than the type. I think you will agree. Christ is also called the last Adam. Why is he called the last Adam? Because Adam was a type of Christ. We're all familiar with the fact that the whole human race came into sin and death through Adam and Christ is the channel through which the whole creation comes into justification. But obviously, Christ has to be more than the type. Just as he is more than the type of the lamb, thus he's more than the type of Adam. How is that? This is how. 1 Timothy 2.14 Adam was not seduced yet the woman being deluded has come to be in the transgression Adam knew what he was doing the woman was seduced and deluded not him <clears throat> then why did he eat of the fruit that was given him by his wife. Because he's a beautiful type of Christ. Adam had been told by God to be fruitful and multiply. Adam was given the woman to love, to hold, to cherish. And yet here she was on the other side of the iron curtain of sin and death. So what does Adam do? Adam consciously and voluntarily entered into Eve's world. It was the first act of self-sacrificial love that we see in the scriptures. This is one of the greatest ways in which Adam is a type of Christ. But Christ, of course, must be at least equal to Adam. But no, he's greater. Thus, Christ voluntarily entered into our estate. He voluntarily joined us, came to us, 
to partake of the suffering of death and to be surrounded by the realm of sin without being a sinner himself. Yet we are told by those who do not believe in the pre-existence of Jesus Christ, yet we are told that our Lord did not enter our realm voluntarily, that he was thrown into this world unconsciously, just like every other schmuck that comes into the world. making him less than Adam, making Adam's act a greater act of love than Christ's. But ladies and gentlemen, this is impossible. Christ was not thrown into this world unwillingly. The rest of creation was. Romans 8.20 For to vanity was the creation subjected not willingly but by reason of him who subjects it. Our Lord was not merely one of the creation. He was greater. He was not thrown into this world involuntarily like the rest of us schmucks. No, he voluntarily entered into our world and thus becoming the perfect fulfillment of the type of Adam who voluntarily joined his wife in the realm of sin and death. You might say Adam didn't have to do that. He could have said, well, good luck, honey. Sorry about your misfortune, but there's no way I'm gonna eat this fruit because I know what it portends. I know exactly what I would be doing. I guess you're on your own, honey. But no. Again, I say, it was the first act of sacrificial love we see in the scriptures. And yet we are told that Christ, who is called the last Adam, is less than this. He does not enter the world voluntarily. He does not demonstrate a great sacrificial love. Ah, but Paul tells us differently, doesn't he? In the plainest words you can imagine, Paul says in Philippians 2, verses 6 and 7, that Christ, being in the form of God and deeming it not pillaging to be equal with God, nevertheless empties himself, taking the form of a slave coming to be in the likeness of humanity he humbles himself unto death even the death of the cross this is profound and it's the plainest words you can imagine corroborating perfectly the love the voluntary love that Adam showed to his wife to the woman that came out of him all creation came out of Christ. And there he was in the form of God, at the right hand of God, knowing what he would do, knowing. And yet willingly taking our estate. In this, he is the perfect type. He is the perfect fulfillment of the type of Adam. And to say that he is less than that is blasphemous. And I want to say of our brothers who say that 
Christ is less than Adam in this aspect, I want to say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. They don't believe he was in the form of God, even though scripture says he was. They believe that before he came to earth at Bethlehem, that he was but a figure of speech. He was but a concept. But a figure of speech and a concept is already a form. Was he in the form of a form? before he came to earth? No, Paul specifically says he was in the form of God, which makes his sacrifice even more stunning, even more startling, even more awe-inspiring as we see him voluntarily giving himself to us just as Adam voluntarily. Adam was not a concept. Adam was not a figure of speech. Adam was a man. He voluntarily gave himself to the realm of his wife to be with her. To say that Christ does less is blasphemous. It's a terrible, terrible mistake. Those who would try, but thankfully fail to convince us that Christ is less than Adam in this aspect, they claim to have done a deep dive they claim to have undertaken in-depth studies to try to tell us that Christ did not, was not in the form of God and did not empty himself to take the form of a slave to come into the likeness of humanity. Even though as I and others have repeatedly given the many, many verses that prove Christ did pre-exist his birth in Bethlehem. Isn't it strange that one would feel compelled to embark on in-depth study and research in order to go against plain scriptures what would be the motivation the only motivation I can think of is a predisposition a predisposition that Christ did not pre-exist people say what are you going to say to God Martin what are you going to say to Christ when you stand at the dais and find out that you are wrong about Christ emptying himself well I would say to God, you know, I'm sorry. I would say to Christ, I'm sorry that I really thought that you had done what Adam did, that you had exceeded Adam. I thought you were actually greater, more glorious, more influential in the creation of things, in the existence of things than you actually are. And Christ would say, well, what made you think that? Well, it was all those verses. It was all those verses. It wasn't helpful, really, Christ, my Lord, that you put all those verses in there that plainly stated that you did have a glory before the world was, that you did exist before Abraham, and that all creation came into existence out of God and through you. That really threw me off. Christ will say, well, you didn't have the right predisposition. And I will say, ah, oh, it's about predisposition. Right, right. My predisposition was to err on the side of your glory, your influence, your greatness, your sacrifice, your love, to the extent that you would voluntarily join us in this realm of sin and death. That was my predisposition. And all the verses that I saw corresponded with that predisposition, my predisposition, aligned with Scripture. Christ will say, ah, but you had the wrong predisposition. You were to be predisposed to me being lesser, lesser, lesser. Ah, but Lord, then I would have to embark on an in-depth study 
to try to find something different than what I was seeing. If I am predisposed to you being lesser than you really are, then I would have to work hard, strain and sweat to make the scriptures say something else. And so it is. And so it is. It's unnecessary work. It's blasphemous work. It's a work that caters to a predisposition that would make Christ lesser than what he is. And I see that now. It's all about the predisposition. You may say, but Martin, you say that the truth is always lying one level below the surface. Yes, that's in a bad translation. The great word Ion, the great words Hades, Gehenna, and Tartarus, these are mistranslated in the common versions. And so we need to dig one level below and get a concordance and see what the word of God really says. But once we have a good translation and we see what the word of God really says, then we believe it. And so those who would claim to do in-depth research it's a false labor. It's a, an attempt to put a positive light on doubting the word of God. All to cater to a predisposition. What predisposition? The predisposition that Christ is lesser than Adam. That he does not have the glory, the power, the influence in the creation, in the sustaining of the creation, in the cohering of the creation that he really has. No, not me. Not me. Of course, I will never have to worry about that at the dais. I will not have to inform Christ of how great he is of how influential he was in the bringing forth of all creation in the voluntarily emptying of himself from the form of God to take the form of a slave I won't have to do that because ladies and gentlemen I would much rather be a person at the dais of Christ who overestimates Christ rather than underestimates him